John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. I want to thank you for tuning us in, turning us on. It's an extremely important show today with Michelle, Michelle Magner joining me here today. And the reason that it's important, this is a body of work that Michelle has said yes to. It's more than a show. And, you know, we open this up by saying, oh, we're doing a show, but it's really much more than that. This episode is called Be the Caregiver and Be Cared For. And if I was not in the middle of this, I would not have the kind of appreciation I have now. And I don't know how Michelle has been doing this, like picking out the episode and the timing of them, but they're so important. Today's show will take you on a journey to so many aspects of who you are and who you have to become if you say yes to this. And I want to just say out of the gate, I have learned more and I could have never predicted the situation that I would be in today and what it would be like not becoming a student of Michelle and what she does. Now, before we go ahead and we talk about this, how do people find out about what you do? How do they connect with you? Thanks for having me, Dr. Pat. I would love for people to join me on my podcast. It's on multiple platforms. It's called Inspired Caring, and it really is about the inspiration to take care of yourself as the family caregiver, as you are caring for those that you love. They can also find me at michellemagner.com. I'm a 1L Michelle, Dr. Pat, yeah. so michellemagner.com. Yeah, that's how Jessica's a 1S Jessica. Um, <laughs> look, uh, I want to talk about what it means to claim the identity of a caregiver because, I mean, I don't want to take up a lot of time, but I will tell you this. We had a doctor's appointment yesterday and both of us walked out of there. Stunned is an understatement. Mm -hmm. Doctor of the year, doctor, cardiologist, great. Walked out of there though. And it wasn't until this morning where we looked at each other and, and both of us said, what just happened there? And what do we believe? And what does it mean? And the heaviness of that, I could not have predicted that the role of identity of caregiver included an emotional side of this about decisions and about things that are said. I could have never, I never, it never entered my mind, but isn't that part of what you talk about? Absolutely. It's not just the logistics of it. There, This is a caregiving journey. This is a care partnering journey. So there's ups and downs. There's different stages. There's different chapters along this journey. And with each uh, chapter, there are different emotions that come along with it. And, you know, the situation that you're presently in is very different than many people find themselves. They're thinking, well, I'm not a caregiver, right? Like that's for somebody else. But this is the story of the slow boiling frog right? You put a frog in a pot of cold water and they don't even, they, you know, they feel just fine. And you just keep notching up the heat on them and they don't even realize once that water is boiling. And I think that is what is happening with so many people in our country and around the world is that they are not identifying as a caregiver. And so you are in a very fragile stage, of this journey. And it is not just about, well, like, how are we going to get the lawn mowed, right? Or get groceries delivered. I mean, this is big. That was part one. Like when I got here, well, those were the kinds of things or how do we clean the house out with stuff that doesn't mm -hmm. belong here. But these are the parts we don't talk around, but the identity that we claim for ourselves. And, you know, I didn't really, I didn't really put that skin on right away mm -hmm. until we started to do these shows. But let's talk about what that means and how you have to step into that role and not just claim the identity, but claim what does it mean? What do you do? 
how do you process and then how do you care for yourself, right? Absolutely. So if we think about all these other roles that we take on in our life, um, but maybe it's mother, maybe it's athlete or baseball player, like as soon as you start to unlock these different identities around you, it unlocks the resources. It's like this lifeboat of resources can float up next to you. Um, things like, you know, where where maybe you're going to practice or rehearse if you're a ballerina, right? So who are you surrounding yourself with? What are the types of activities that you're engaging in? All of those stuff, that reticular activating system will start to shimmy those resources to you. So it's so important to just crack open this door and invite people to consider that they are in a family caregiver role because then you can go to the interwebs and start searching for resources that are going to best help them, but also support you along the way. Yeah. I mean, these are the things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about also be cared for and what that means. And Mm -hmm. the reason that this is so important, I I don't know the illusion that we've created for ourselves in our world, where we think that somebody else is going to step in and do something for someone we love. We're not in that world anymore. We're living longer than we've ever lived before. There's a level of accountability we talked about at the last show, but Mm -hmm. I will tell you that I sit here today and I didn't realize the web, how far the web extends into this role and the kinds of decisions you have to think about and make, not just at the beginning, but every step of the way, every new bit of information. Nobody prepares you for that. Nobody prepares you for that. And it's um, you're making in the moment decisions and decisions about the future. And our futures can be fairly unpredictable, especially when we're looking at a diagnosis um, or a health decline or incident. And it's just so important, again, to open up our minds to this idea that maybe I am a family caregiver so that we can start to think about how we're going to take care of ourselves, right? We cannot pour from an empty cup. You Mm -hmm. must, must, must put your oxygen mask on first because if you you will go down with the ship, like that's what the statistics are showing us for people that are on this caregiving journey, that if you are just constantly focused on the other person and not Mm -hmm. caring for your own self along the way, um, it has massive health consequences for you as well. Yeah. Look, I want to talk to you about this now. I want to talk to you about the types of options we have for somebody in this Mm -hmm. position. Now, look, what was the simple version for me last night after leaving that doctor's appointment and not really maybe avoidance, let's call it. It just didn't hit us. It didn't hit us. The words didn't hit us. Uh, So I went and played ping pong. Okay. I, Mm -hmm. I went to the league and drag my best friend with me because she's well enough to come with me. She sat there and played her game and, and I played ours. But what I, what I learned thanks to you is I stopped at the point where I knew I'm not in a hundred percent shape not to play at this competitive level. And I left early. See, I normally wouldn't have done that. I would have Mm -hmm. stayed till midnight and finished and played with the league. Even with that, This morning, getting up was really, really different. But let's talk about what options are available because this is something I didn't realize. I didn't know these. Tell us what they are. Well, we have talked about, um, first of all, you have to get the lay of the land. Like it took me a minute with some of my family members. I've cured for four different family members. You have to start by just getting the lay of the land and realizing that something has changed. Like you are now going to be taking on some additional responsibilities. So with that, you know, you've got your basic health needs, uh, food, like how are you going to get food to the house? Are you going to have food delivered maybe through online grocery ordering or a meal service kit? Um, Maybe it's, we're going to start to work on our network. You talk about the accountability of it really landing on one person's shoulders. We've talked about that. And our cu- our culture has really shifted. It's changed. Back in the 40s, 1930s and 40s, we were much more in community with one another, right? So you could look around. All the children typically lived in the same area. Um, all of the, your, your church community or faith-based community, whatever that looked like. And we're just so spread out. So part of the lay of the land is really acknowledging that you're the person. We need to get our financial house in order and our legal house in order. Like who is going to actually be making when it 
push comes to shove decisions and making sure that that paperwork is actually taken care of because that protects you and protects them. Advocacy, equipment, solutions. There are so many tricks of the trade. Something as simple as like a gate belt, right? If you have a bad back and the person that you love needs assistance standing up out of a chair, not just dragging them up by the wrists, right? Using a piece of equipment like a gate belt is something that can save your back and help them with some dignity as well. Yeah. There are little things that you enter the role with that you don't think about. For mm -hmm. example, having the person drink the amount of water they're supposed to drink to flush the medication through their system, that alone and monitoring that can put somebody over the edge. Picking your battles carefully is an yeah. art, isn't it? It really is an art. And we have to remember, it's so important for us to identify what our core values are. And remember that if someone is not 100% on board or they're disagreeing with our course of action, they have their own set of core values. They are adults and they have been making a lot of decisions their whole life. So really knowing yourself, how you operate, how you think, picking your battles, health and safety tend to be the two top uh, concerns for people, for families, and how do we get on the same page? Now, we may not agree on how to get there, right? But yeah. that's where we need to kind of scale it back a little bit and think, okay, in the long run, in the end, does it really matter if we do it my way? Like, does it really matter if it's a single cup, a giant cup of water that we're working on? Or what if we had 10 cups of water spread throughout the house, right? Don't get so attached to your way of doing things. And to, my goodness, keep things in perspective. Like we have these little health crises or chapters that can be pretty complicated. Things will change. It always does. It's just wanna, the nature of it. It's the nature of it. I want to take a short break when we come back. I want to talk about a couple of other things too, before we get to this idea about just be. And there are a few tricks of the trade that I've learned thanks to you and what we're going to talk about. Laughter, mm -hmm. it is critical. Let's take a short break. When we come back, what else do you need to know if you are standing in the shadows of caring and being that caregiver? You also have to be cared for. Where do you mm -hmm. start? Do you know why you resist it? And is it all in the small steps? Michelle's going to walk us through that when we come back, everybody. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Special edition, Dr. Pacho, be the caregiver and be cared for with Michelle. Michelle Magner joining me here today. Um, we're going to talk about, you know, in these last segments we have left, it's really important to really talk about what is just be mean, but there's also something about caring that each of us should know. Now, you may be sitting there thinking to yourself, oh, I don't know, it's never going to happen to me. Well, I was sitting there thinking the same thing. I was literally, I'm um, telling you, Eight weeks ago, never thought this be me talking about this, having a real life situation. And you don't know what you don't know. But if you have someone like Michelle and you listen to her podcast and you go to her website, and you get some help. The journey does not have to be chaotic and chaos added to caregiving is a formula for disaster. Michelle, what is the best way again for people to learn a little bit more about you plug into your podcast, all of the above? I'd love to have people join me on it's inspired caring and that's across all the platforms inspired caring uh, podcast platforms. And then Michelle Magner.com is my website. Just one Ellen, Michelle, Michelle Magner.com. Now, before we just uh, talk a little bit about what it means to just be and those stories we do tell ourselves, there are a few things that I know are important to mention. Uh, I was saying to you that, look, laughter is important. Music is important. And then opening up to receive. You really have to look at these things to really set the stage to just be, don't you? 
You really do. And, you know, we do have some barriers and resistance to asking for help. It's just how we're wired. Isn't it much more fun to take a meal to someone than to have that meal dropped on your porch, right? We're, we're <laughs> giving creatures. We, we love to do that. One of the issues that people have is this equity theory. They are concerned, like, if I ask for help, then our relationship is no longer equal. We're off balance. You know, people feel th their self-esteem feels threatened. Um, reciprocation, they feel like, well, if I ask and they do for me, then I can't do back. So a little bit is really just having to step into this idea that this is where I'm at right now. Like it seems to be okay if someone passes away to receive a little help and support and assistance if someone has a new baby, right? So just, this is a temporary chapter. I love that you mentioned music. Um, we really, it's so important to lighten up um, and have that laughter and and the music really can help people. It's like a time machine. Music is like a time machine for you and the person that you're taking care of. So I, those are two really top tiered things for me to help people reframe work perspective on things and lighten up a little bit, not take themselves so seriously, which can also crack open the door to receiving some of that help. Yeah. I mean, all of this really has us look introspectively. And that's the next thing we're going to talk about too, because this is really a critical time where, at least for me, I had to reset priorities. Mm -hmm. I had to reset priorities. It wasn't a question mark for me. I knew what my priorities were that I had to reshift. Now, I didn't have all the answers about how I was going to restructure things, but I had to stop. I had to look what's important to me. You know, what's my commitment here? What am I going to do? What are the other options? How many people am I going to sit down with later today and have a different kind of conversation with? All of these things factor into it, don't they? Absolutely. I mean, and think about your whole life, right? Where all the different chapters and periods of your life, your priorities have changed over time. And it's okay to support and embrace this idea that right now this is uh, the priority in your life is to care for this family member. You mentioned the stories we tell ourselves. I'll tell you, especially when we have adult children that are caring for aging parents and grandparents, I'm 51 years old and I have a lot of stories that I, and narratives that I have just really clung to through my childhood as I stepped into adulthood. And I had to start making some decisions about letting some of that stuff go, you know, like, well, they've always favored the brother. And he's not lifting a finger right now to help, right? So these are the types of things that really weigh us down as we are in these caregiver roles. And it causes so much conflict within the family, so much conflict. So, so be, as you are exploring your priorities, also just be really curious about the stories that you're telling yourself. What is going to make this time easier for me right now? What do I need today, right now, today? And maybe it is a door dashed uh, coffee. <laughs> exactly. Well, is that, but how, how can you support yourself today? And then we do really need to be looking at the big picture because like that boiling frog, it, it you're going to drown. Yeah. You're so right. I mean, the other day we went to the grocery store and, you know, I never thought I'd say this, but where is the time that you find to even cook? Hello. Mm -hmm. what, what happened to that time? And yet I know that this is a time where you do not put junk in your body. And the discovery to go to the grocery store here where I am in New Jersey and find this grocery store, the ShopRite store, has these delicious meals like salmon and vegetables for a, a such a reasonable price. It was like, oh my gosh, why didn't I see it before? See, right. these are the shortcuts that I think we don't even think to take. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, my, one of my grandmothers, I called it the peanut butter cracker phase because I went into her home and what I often found was an open jar of peanut butter with a knife jammed in it with a sleeve of saltines next to it. And so that's when I started really oh getting God. involved. So part of this is if you're on this journey um, about being the caregiver, identifying as the caregiver is to really look around and see what little signs are starting to feel off and then start to put into place, what am I going to need to really make sure, what are my deal breakers that I'm going to take care of myself? And something as simple as just picking up some prepackaged 
meals at the grocery yeah. store is a great thing for them and a great thing for you. I cannot believe you just brought that up because that's exactly what happened yesterday. And I just looked at that and rushing out to go play ping pong, both of us. And I, that scenario with the crackers and the peanut butter, you must have been. It's the, I call it the peanut butter cracker phase. Like it's so consistent. And this is the thing, Dr. Pat, is like we all feel so isolated. We all feel like we're on this island and we're only one, the only ones going through it. There's so many common denominators and so many common threads. And, you know, I think especially for women, we have been such givers our whole lives and we've been so focused on taking care of other people that this role, it's really very different. Has it been different for you? Unpredictable. Different is not even the right word. Yeah. Surreal. Yeah. And yet because of my background and some of the skills I have, I can step into it. But I will tell you without doing the show with you and the time, the universe is so interesting. Mm. You showing up to do a show like this at a time that I couldn't have even imagined. Any time that I prepare for the show and I look at your website and I look at your web and, and we know your podcast because we've just uploaded a ton of them. But mm -hmm. all of these bits of information have been instrumental. However, with all of that, I never thought that a doctor's appointment like the one yesterday would leave both of us speechless. But mm. yet I know from you, it's just part of the process. Look, right. sometimes you have to regroup. Sometimes you have to look at what, what this is. Let's recap about the ABCs because this is where we started. And I yeah. am really struck by the accountability part of this because it sticks with me, right? The, yes, the A and ABCs are is about accountability, accountability aging, and all of the research that I've done and all the books that I've read, it really, it nobody's coming to save us. There is no magic pill. It really is looking at your life every day. What is going to bring you quality of life? We don't want just longevity. We don't want just quantity of life, right? What's the point of that? If you're miserable every day. So Account, being accountable to moving your body, choosing the right things to eat. These are factors as, as how we're aging. Early on, we started out this talking about the ABCs. Mm -hmm. Let's remind everybody what they are. And I want to thank you so much for this. Also, let's give people a lot of information about you. But my experience with my best friend really had me take a closer look at myself. Am I doing what I need to do to prepare? And isn't that the accountability part of it? The second part of it is B, be the caregiver. And the C is for checking in and checking out. And all of that has to happen simultaneously. And it can happen at any point in time on any given day with any situation, correct? That's absolutely right. You know, you want to daily check in with yourself. How am I doing? You do not want to just check out, zone out, numb out with alcohol or food. Uh, back to B, being the caregiver, being cared for. You know, what can I learn? Who can I help? How do I take care of myself along the way? Because you cannot give what you do not have. And then back to A, that accountability aging. Yep. Michelle. How excited are you about what you're doing, the future, your podcast, and inviting people to step into an arena with you, somebody that knows, and we cannot get to everything in these short three shows we've done or four shows or however, but there's so much more that people cannot predict. I could have never predicted yesterday, mm -hmm. never, like implanting a microchip in somebody. I mean, who does that? I could, you could not talk to me about that eight weeks ago, but here's where we are. How, how can we help people? How can we talk with them about what to prepare for and why you're here, what your why is? My why really is making sure that people have the information and resources that they need so they can best make their decisions for themselves and their family members. And having that support is like, you know, that big safety raft underneath. So the content that I'm creating is really around having information. I'm creating a senior living, illuminating senior living class. It's all the ins and outs just to answer questions, right? I'm not saying that that's the right answer for everybody. Some people want to focus on staying home. Some people 
at some point do feel like that is the best option. So just getting the information, opening the door. So Illuminating Senior Living is a class online. It's being released September 15th. And then um, really just ongoing support programs are what I offer so that people feel like they are not alone because they are not alone. I hope you're going to be taking stories and information for that because I've learned more on this journey unimaginable thank you so much for everything michelle last question what's your personal message what would you like to leave us with today you know my personal message today is it really does go back to the isolation and people feel like they can't talk about this stuff with their other friends or family members because they don't feel like other people understand and as you know having stepped into this role it is a pretty unique situation so seeking connection with others who have been in this space or are on this journey is so critically important. You have to take care of yourselves. And I don't like to have to or should on people, but it really is absolutely necessary. It's the only way that you will thrive as you are caring for someone that you love. I love it. Michelle, thank you so much for everything you do. And boy, we are here to support you a million percent because there's so much more that people can do to help themselves. Thank you for everything. Thanks, Dr. Pat. All right. All of you out there, please get connected with Michelle. Think about the tip of the iceberg. Think about what I said. I didn't even know what I didn't know. And I am learning something new every day about myself and the role. Get some help from Michelle. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.